The Philippines' debt continues to increase every single year. As of the end of 2023, the Philippines' national debt reached a new high of 14.62 trillion pesos, an 8.92% increase from the previous year's level of 13.18 trillion pesos. It is further projected that in 2024, it will rise to over 15.8 trillion pesos. This is a lot of money, and it often strikes fear into people. Yet, the truth of the matter is, it doesn't actually matter. Here's why. Before we try to understand how the national debt of the Philippines works, we must first divide it into two parts, domestic and foreign debt. The end of 2023 data shows that domestic borrowings amount to 10.02 trillion pesos, and 4.6 trillion pesos are from foreign debt. This is where things become important. Foreign debt is money borrowed overseas, whether it be from governments, international financial institutions, or private investors. This type of borrowing is common for many countries and is used to finance a wide range of public and private sector activities from infrastructure projects and social programs to corporate investments and government spending. Foreign debt, as it is by the word debt, needs to be paid back. When the Philippine government borrows money from Japan, for instance, they must abide by the conditions of whatever deal they signed and pay them back. This is mostly done in foreign currencies. The Japanese yen is usually the one given to the Philippines from Japan. Sometimes, depending on who lends the money, it can be the US dollar, euro, or the likes. But not the Philippine peso. Paying back foreign debt is then risky, because the Philippines do not have an unlimited supply of foreign currency. Yet, this is where domestic debt comes into play. Domestic debt in the Philippines is sourced locally. It's borrowed from individuals like many local Filipinos to banks such as BDO or BPI and other financial institutions within the country. The Philippine government then does not really have to worry about this domestic debt like how it needs to worry about foreign debt. That's because the country can print its own money. It has its own central bank, also known as the Banco Central of the Philippines, BSP for short. The BSP can print money for the Philippine government to utilize in managing domestic debt, providing a significant tool to handle economic challenges. To put it simply, there's no need to worry about the Philippine debt. The country and the government can pay it any time. To worry about its foreign debt is also unnecessary, simply because its foreign debt isn't huge. The 10 trillion pesos sourced domestically is what gets people. Now, that's not to say that the Philippine government can print and print money over and over again. That should never happen, as there will be repercussions. To understand this, let's discuss the limitations of money printing. Firstly, the process of money printing, which is technically known as quantitative easing, can help the government finance its expenditures without relying on external borrowing. This approach can be particularly useful during economic downturns or crises, when the government needs to increase its spending to stimulate the economy or to finance relief efforts. The use of domestically sourced funds, in this case, helps maintain economic stability without increasing the country's foreign debt burden. This occurred during COVID-19. The Philippine government engaged in a form of quantitative easing by working in tandem with the BSP, the BSP provided substantial financial support to the government through bond purchases and other monetary tools. This move was aimed at funding the government's various programs designed to mitigate the economic impact of the pandemic, such as social programs, support for healthcare systems, and stimulus packages for affected industries. The infusion of liquidity into the economy had several immediate benefits. It helped in keeping the financial system stable during a period of heightened uncertainty and panic. Additionally, by increasing the money supply, the government was able to ensure that businesses and individuals had access to credit, which is crucial for maintaining economic activities during a lockdown. This approach also prevented a severe credit crunch that could have exacerbated the economic downturn. However, as we later saw, inflation rose. The Philippines recorded inflation of as high as 8.7% in January of 2023. Why did this happen? 
Well, some people say it's because of global disruptions in supply chains, whereas others claim that it's because of the government's failure. Well, it's not actually. It's simply because the government printed too much money, leading to an excess supply of currency in the economy. This phenomenon is commonly known as too much money chasing too few goods, a basic principle of economics. When the government prints more money, each unit of currency tends to lose value, leading to a decrease in its purchasing power. This inflation that we saw in the Philippines is seen all across the world, as most nations are printing billions upon billions of their own currency to ensure their economies are kept alive. This then leads the central banks and the BSP to raise interest rates. Raising interest lowers inflation rate because it reduces the amount of money circulating in the economy. High interest rates make it more expensive for individuals and businesses to borrow money. This higher cost of borrowing effectively discourages spending and investment, leading to a decrease in the overall demand for goods and services. To put the entire video in simple words, the Philippine government does not really have to worry about its domestic debt. It can print money to pay it back, but at the cost of inflation. Now, it is important to understand that it's not just inflation, but we'll leave it at that to simplify the understanding of domestic debt issues. This also answers the notion that foreign debt is also important. The Philippines can't continuously print money to fund its own infrastructure projects. This is why the Philippines, most of the time, borrow money from Japan. This way, they don't have to deal with inflation issues and other printing consequences. Furthermore, one of the main advantages of borrowing from foreign institutions like the World Bank or the International Monetary Fund is that these loans often come with relatively low interest rates compared to domestic borrowing. This makes the cost of borrowing cheaper for the government. Take for example Japan, which lends at a rate of 0.1%. How could one go wrong on borrowing from foreign countries if their interest rate is a mere 0.1%? Another facet that makes foreign borrowing important is that they come with technical expertise and oversight. In some Japanese-funded projects in the Philippines, the government and private enterprises have partnered with Japanese companies. This can help ensure that the funds are used efficiently and for the intended purposes, potentially increasing the effectiveness of the infrastructure projects and other funded initiatives. But just like domestic debt, foreign debt must be balanced. Domestic debt should not be excessively done, as well as foreign debt. On the off chance that foreign debt becomes large, the Philippines is still safer than most countries. Let's remember that the Philippines holds about 4.6 trillion Philippine pesos in foreign debt. In US dollars, this is about 75 to 80 billion, depending on the exchange rate. Now, just take a look at the Philippines' foreign reserves. It's over 100 billion US dollars. Surely enough, the Philippines has more reserves than its foreign obligations. Now, finally, before we end the video, it's important to know that we did not use the debt-to-GDP ratio. Debt-to-GDP ratio is an economic metric that compares a country's public debt to its gross domestic product. By comparing what a country owes to what it produces, the debt-to-GDP ratio reliably indicates the country's ability to pay back its debts. If we abide by this metric, the Philippines is still capable of paying off its debt properly, as the country only has a debt-to-GDP ratio of about 60.9%, lower than other developing nations. For instance, India has 89%, Thailand also has 60.9%, and Malaysia at 60.4%. Yet India and other countries with debt-to-GDP of over 100% are still growing. It all lies in the management of the government and its central bank. However, one should also understand that debt-to-GDP ratio is not everything. While certainly there are numerous studies out there that showcase how high debt-to-GDP ratio can slow economic growth, there are also studies that say the exact opposite. Therefore, it really relies on how the Philippine government manages its debt. Whether the debt is to cover infrastructures, social services, or future economic growth plans. 
But if that debt is used to pay down unyielding results, then it may likely be the source of slow economic growth rate. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.